Dr. Adrian Owen has just made a groundbreaking discovery in neuroscience. 12 years ago, Canadian Scott Routley sustained major brain damage in a car accident, and ever since, doctors have presumed that he's in a vegetative state with no awareness or ability to communicate. But Dr. Owen has just turned that theory on its head by communicating with Scott via high-tech brain imaging, and he joins us now to explain how he did that and what it means for people suffering from brain damage. So, Tell us exactly what happened when you made that breakthrough. How did you communicate with Scott when no one could for 12 years? Uh, we used a type of brain scanning known as fMRI or functional magnetic resonance imaging. And this allows us to see responses in the brain. Now that's, that's quite key here because this is a group of patients who can't make any physical responses, yet they are able to make responses with their brain. And we can detect this with the fMRI scanner. Just briefly, can you tell us what an fMRI is? It's a, a type of magnetic resonance imaging, and the F stands for functional. And what that means is we look at activity in the brain. So although we, we also take a high-resolution anatomical, a physical image of the brain, we also look at the, or we're able to detect changes in activity. We're able to see those regions of the brain that are involved in a particular activity. What did Scott say? Well, we were only able to ask questions that Scott could answer with simple yes and no responses. We asked him to imagine one scenario for a yes and imagine a different scenario for a no. And we can decode, we could decode which, which one of those two scenarios he was thinking about. And to do, we were then able to ask questions to make sure that he knew who he was, where he was, and, and what was going on around him. Is this a technology that did not exist before at all? I mean, are, is this building on something that people have been using previously, or is this just a total game changer? Using it in, in this way is, is pretty new. We first did it in, in 2006 to show that a patient who appeared to be entirely vegetative was in fact aware. We then took that technology and pushed it one stage further in 2010 to show that you could actually communicate with people using the technology. What we've done here for the first time is to use it to ask questions of a patient that are actually relevant to that patient's clinical condition. So this person is telling us information that we have no other way of knowing. It always has to be a yes or no question that you're asking them, is that right? At the moment it does, but um, you know, there's an awful lot you can get out of somebody by just having them answer yes and no. You have to phrase the questions appropriately, but you can find out an awful lot of information about how people are feeling, the, si the situation they're in, what they know, what they remember, what they are aware of, um, whether they are in pain. There are many, many things that you can find out that are actually relevant both to the person's life but also to, to, to knowing what cognitive capabilities they still have and, and what might be irreparably damaged. It's, it's very important to realise that we get positive results in only about one in five patients. So this is not something that's going to work for every patient who's very severely brain damaged or every patient who appears to be vegetative. At best, it's probably going to be positive results for one in five. So one thing I know about fMRI is that when you're doing studies with it, often you have to do the, the procedure over and over and over to try to get a signal from your, your patient. So will, will Scott have to answer the same question multiple times in order to get a yes, or is it instant? So that's one reason why this research has taken so much time and so much effort by my brilliant research team. Like all patients, he has good days and he has bad days. He has days when he's very responsive, days when he's not terribly responsive. We typically focus on the days when he's very responsive and we can decode answers unambiguously because of course the stakes are quite high here and we, we, we don't want to make any mistakes if we're asking a question like, are you in pain? So, you know, some days we have to accept that we don't get any, any good data from the patient. So what's next? We are developing uh, techniques using a different type of technology, using EEG or electroencephalography. Now, EEG is more portable and considerably less expensive than MRI. That means we can take it to the patients. And I think that is where we potentially could make a real difference. At the moment, EEG, I think, offers the potential of, of being a true brain-computer interface, something that could allow one of these patients to communicate reliably and on a daily basis with the people around them. And that's, that's really the end game. That's what we're aiming for here.
Well, you've already changed the world for the better, and I wish you the best of luck with that future research. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you very much.